Functional work design. It is normal in our service organisations to find work designed in functional specialisms. For example, in many call centres, managers believe specialising the work is advantageous because newcomers require less training to start making a contribution. This works fine if the work is simple and unvarying, but in most service organisations, the demands which come in from customers are usually customer-shaped, not functionally specific. It means work for the customer has to be passed around, and this creates waste. It is the same in many IT help desks. People are organised around expert specialisms. They do hardware or software. Again, it requires adaptation to respond properly to customers' demands, and this will mean passing the customer around. In both of these examples, managers often try to specialise work in another way easy or complex, in order to minimise the use of their more expensive expert people. In IT help desks, this may mean the customer has to talk to as many as four people before they get to someone who understands what they are talking about. People working in each function are encouraged to do their own work, make their own numbers, rather than work across boundaries to solve customers' problems. Passing the work on will help them make their numbers, but it does little for the customer. Sometimes, managers create new specialisms for the things that fall between the cracks, only exacerbating the organisation's inability to provide a service, creating more cracks. The more specialisms you create, the more you spend your time writing rules for what goes where. The more specialisms you create, the more customer work is broken down, and the more it is broken down, the more we have to work on bringing it back together. The more people are focused on making their numbers, the less they will be focused on solving customers' problems. Functional work design leads to focusing upwards, not on customers'.